Hi everyone, I'm Kendall Fisher and I'd like to welcome you to Customer Spotlight, a series which shines a light on impressive and inspiring companies that are accomplishing amazing things with Oracle technology. This episode, we are shining a light on one very special and very delicious company that's on a mission to cultivate a better world by serving food with integrity. Chipotle Mexican Grill. My mouth is watering just thinking about the chicken burrito and steak tacos right now, but their dedication to deliciousness is only bolstered by this mission. Food with integrity means no freezers, no ovens, not even any can openers at any of their locations. They also recycle their food preparation gloves to make trash bags, which helps divert 50% of their waste from landfills. All of this played a big role in Chipotle's booming popularity since its founding in 1993, and it now operates over 3,000 stores all over the globe. Of course, this kind of growth requires the right systems in place to make it successful, and Chipotle turned to Oracle for help with financial and supply chain processes. Now, before we introduce our guests to dive deeper into Chipotle's growth journey and how their mission drives business process transformation and really changes the way people think about food, I have one question. Can a burrito change the world? What if this could change the world? A burrito. Yeah. It can. It could. You are so weird. It could could change how we plant things and grow things. And improve the dirt where we grow those things. It could save water by changing how we use it. It could make us more responsible and sustainable. It could change how we pick things, move things, and transportation things. What? That's not a thing. Whatever. It can make our farmers happier. And they can make our animals happier. Can trees be happier? Probably. We could do things more locally, so everyone's happier. More organic, more real. Soil helping, future facing, less carbon emitting, and world changing. Hey, are you still talking? Now, please join me in welcoming Chipotle's Vice President and Controller, Jamie McConnell, as well as Oracle Product Marketing's Tansy Brook. What is special about Chipotle? Like, why do you, why do you like working at Chipotle? I think because it's a purpose-driven brand, so you can feel the energy when you walk in the office. Like, everybody's behind our purpose and our culture. Like, it really is a unique culture. What would you say the, the culture of Chipotle is? What's the spirit of Chipotle? I would say that everyone's real and authentic. So I would say that's one thing that kind of sets us apart is everybody's very real and true to Chipotle. And I feel like people are very passionate about Chipotle and their food. So that makes it exciting too, because we have good food. <laughs> Chipotle in general is going yeah. through huge growth right now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what that growth looks like? Like, you know, where are you as a business right now? And um, where do you see yourselves going in the short term? Yeah, so right now, I mean, we're just over, or just about 3,000 restaurants, right? And we plan to double our business. So we have to support that growth. So I just see us being able to future automate. So we're doubling the business, but we're not doubling headcount. And I think with our business doubling in size that we can't always double the headcount, right? So the accounting, it's changing with robotics, with automation, everything's changing. What were some of the challenges that, um, that your team was having in the past with the systems that you were on? So I felt like we we're behind the curve all the time. So we were on this on-premise solution that was highly customized. So we were unable to take advantage of upgrades because we were so highly customized. So it resulted in us having a lot of bolt-on solutions. And so I felt like we were really reactionary versus proactive. Since you had all these different systems that are sort of glommed together, you didn't really have a single streamlined system. And that was really important for you to, to do as a business. Why was that important? Like, why does it matter that you had all these different fragmented systems? Because we want it to be a one-stop shop. And then when we would change Oracle, we would have to change those systems. So we really wanted one solution um, to move forward. And I felt like Oracle provided that. And I also like that 
with the cloud, you're getting updates every quarter. So we didn't feel like we were reacting. If anything, we're trying to keep up with Oracle. So there's always new functionality coming out and we wanna make sure that we're taking advantage of it. And so that's the cool thing. It's you're not getting approval to do this big system upgrade. You're actually getting that functionality every single quarter. And I also felt like with Oracle, we're able to give them um, things that we want to put in the next solution, right? So it's like, I feel like we're working together as a team and Oracle works with us to meet our needs. And you guys had been an Oracle customer before, like I think you were EBS on yes, premise? EBS before. So we loved Oracle, it was all the customization. So Oracle was working, it was just that we were so highly customized. So to unravel that was hard. So we knew when we were looking forward that Oracle was gonna be our partner, we just did not wanna be on the on-premise anymore in terms of implementing different products, like where did you start and why did you feel like that was the right place to start? We started with the ERP system, so with the accounting and finance, and we felt like that was the place to start because that really houses everything, right? All of the data, everything that we're working with, so we felt like that was the right place to start. What do you see as the role of finance within uh, the business at Chipotle? So we support the business, so we're a support function. And so we have to let the business be able to make their decisions. So in order to make decisions, you need data, right? And your data needs to be accurate. And so one huge thing also is Chipotle is a public company and we have quick uh, reporting deadlines. And so we need to report on that data pretty quick. And so Oracle Cloud also allowed us to automate the close process, which was helpful because it gave us more time to analyze the data. Can you give an example of when you use data um, to challenge um, you know, a reconciliation when you found an inaccuracy? Yeah, so it was with one of our delivery partners, something looked off and we realized that we were getting overcharged um, for some of our orders because there was refunds made or they were not our responsibility. So we found that in the data when we were analyzing because our reconciliation was off. And was that, um, was that something that, that was a surprise or were you guys, was that sort of expected? I'm just curious what the response no, is like. No, it was definitely a surprise, but I feel like that's the new normal. Right now we have all this data at our fingertips. So I feel like we're way more proactive with everything, even just company spend in general, right? We are able to capture all of that quickly. And do you have any sort of sense on how much savings that you guys have from that? Gosh, I would say a couple million. That's pretty significant. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. What are some of the things that surprised you about this whole journey? I guess, I mean, we implemented in eight months, which I, when we first kicked off the project, I just thought there is no way this is going to happen, that we're going to get this project done in eight months during COVID. But we, we did. We got it done in eight months, and we we're on time, on budget. And I feel I was a little worried about the change management, but I felt like Oracle Cloud was very user friendly. Everybody was able to do everything in one place. So I think that helped with change management, right? You're not learning 17 new systems, you're learning one new system. It seems like um, the role of finance is changing somewhat within businesses. Yeah. Like it seems to, it seems like in the past, finance was really gatekeepers, sometimes naysayers. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it seems like that role is evolving where you're really becoming the co-pilot for strategy within the organization. Like, um, and, and I think that's a very exciting place to be. And I'm curious, what's been your experience with that? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I feel like we're partnering with the business now. And so we feel like we can give them data and direction to make decisions. But I feel like we're part of those decisions now. So that's been exciting. When everything happened with COVID, um, what was sort of the, the tone within the team? Do you feel like there was a, a feeling of responsibility to try to really help support the business because the business was having to support sort of, I don't, I don't mean too big, but society at large. It's like people need to eat, craziness yeah. is happening. Like on one hand, the whole world's saying business stop, but at the end of the day, like people needed <laughs> food and restaurants and delivery and things to happen. And so um, I, I'm curious, did you, did your team feel like a responsibility to sort of step in in some ways and do your part or sort of what was the perception and the feeling on your team when all this was happening? Yeah, I feel like they definitely felt the responsibility to do their part. And I remember calling my team on a Friday and saying, hey, pack up your stuff. We'll be back in two weeks. And a year and a half later, we're still not back in the office, right? But 
we were able to keep all of our processes and meet all of our deadlines. So it's a shout out to my team because they're pretty amazing. <laughs> Can you tell me what, what's sort of your vision? Like um, what, what are you excited about at this point? Like what are you sort of looking forward to? So I'm looking forward to automating as many things as we can. So we just, this year has been a year of automation for us. So we've automated all of our account reconciliations and probably the next step for us is we're doing some RPA, but we haven't done a lot. So I think that'll be the next thing that we kind of venture onto. Can you tell me a little bit about the relationship you have with PwC? Yeah, so PwC was a great partner. They just get us and we have PwC kind of working with us in other areas of the business. So they made sense. So I give a huge shout out to PwC because if it weren't for them, we probably would not have hit our eight month timeline. So I always joke with them as like we're on time and on budget because I told them that was one thing that we had to be and they delivered on it. So that was great. And they're still a great partner. Thank you, Jamie, and best of luck on your year of automation. We look forward to helping you turn that vision into a reality, just like Chipotle made my dreams of the perfect carnitas burrito come true. Now let's hear from the team who, and I quote, got it from day one to help Chipotle get up and running on Oracle Cloud in just eight months. Chipotle is a growth company, a very innovative company, and they're, they're growing by leaps and bounds. They needed this program to help them scale to keep delivering. It really is a, a, a trio of our client, uh, Chipotle, uh, PwC, and Oracle, and how we come together to, to deliver these. And that trust is super important for us to have a successful program. The relationship between PwC and Oracle is important because this is ultimately how we deliver these large transformative programs. Uh, I think being joined at the hip, helping our clients through the transformation uh, while complementing each other's strong suit is important for the client as an outcome. For this type of project, it really does take a cross-functional team. Uh, PwC, we brought our Oracle expertise, we brought our deep industry expertise in the restaurant industry, we brought our security and controls team, we brought our tax team, and we had a, a complete cross-competency team to deliver this program. Um, and, it, and it really does take all of those components to uh, make this project successful. Projects of this size and magnitude requires uh, deep trust between the client and the consultant uh, leading that effort and exercise. Our approach to delivering these programs really starts with our model system. We've developed a model system over several years for the QSR industry, for the restaurant industry, as well as other industries, but we brought that to the table uh, to Chipotle to kickstart the project. And for Chipotle, this project was really important. Uh, time to value was super important. And within seven months, we went live with the first round of financials. So that was a really, really uh, monumental task. Um, is very successful and uh, to get that type of a speed to market um, was just very critical for Chipotle and really made a difference. Lennon and McCartney, Jobs and Waz, Venus and Serena, Chips and Guac, PwC and Chipotle, the most successful partnerships are rooted in mutual respect and trust, delivering unprecedented results. Now, our next guest is here to share insight on overcoming the complexities of serving up food with integrity at over 3,000 restaurants around the world. Please welcome Carlos Lindano, the Vice President and Head of Supply Chain at Chipotle Mexican Grill. Carlos, thank you for being here today. I am thank you for having me. so excited to have this conversation with you. Can you tell me a little bit about your role at um, Chipotle? Sure. I have the incredible privilege of leading the supply chain organization for Chipotle. Mm -hmm. What my team does is essentially purchase all the wonderful food that we serve at the restaurant and then move it around the country in our incredibly vast network of factories and distribution centers. So my team makes sure that all of the food goes from our supplier base into the restaurants so that they can cook that amazing food for your experience every day. I was wondering, do you think a burrito can change the world? A Chipotle burrito can, for sure. Chipotle is doing some things that are completely unique to the industry. Mm -hmm. The things that we're doing, no one else is doing out there. And so we, for example, have very high standards in terms of animal welfare. We also settle for nothing but the best ingredients and the best products out there. 
So we hold ourselves to very high standards, hold our suppliers to very high standards, and that's what allows us to deliver an amazing experience at the restaurant every day. I think a lot of times, if you're just doing you know, small batches of things or small amounts or an individual restaurant, that's, it's a lot easier to have that quality and to have that you know, um, ethics around the food that you're serving. But um, you guys are doing it at a huge scale. How do you um, deliver that quality at scale? So you're exactly right. Delivering that quality at scale is incredibly difficult. So normally, let's say you have a category like chicken. So um, what we call commodity chicken is chicken that is conventionally raised. Our chicken is very special. We don't allow any antibiotics. We don't allow hormones. We don't allow any steroids, nothing of that sort. So immediately that shrinks your supplier base. And keeping 3,000 restaurants in stock of that very specialized food is incredibly complex. It's very difficult. And so in order to do that, we have to have very specialized business processes, very specialized technology, and also incredibly talented people. And that last one's really important. You have to have the right people. Absolutely. People are the most important thing. What was sort of the, the main point where you guys decided to do this transformation? Why did you say decide now is the time we need to we need to make this investment? We need to really make this a priority for our business. Several different factors. First of all, we had a vision that we could become a very strong player in the digital business. And so we knew that we had to re-engineer and change the infrastructure of our restaurants, but also technology had to come along. So very often, I tell people that when I was in engineering school many years ago, longer than I care to remember, we would be taught that assets flow through a system, right? Mm -hmm. So a particular widget will flow through a system, and it was always a tangible good, right? Well, what we've learned over the last couple of decades is there's also data streams that accompany the flow of that asset. And the data stream is very often as important or even more important than the actual flow of good. So therefore, it's very important for you to be able to understand what is going on and make decisions based off of the data that you see. So the Chipotle system is incredibly complex. We have a network of more than 18 distribution centers. We have thousands of suppliers. We have 3,000 restaurants. So at any given moment, there are nodes moving things around the country and around the world at an incredible pace. One of those nodes fails, and you're going to have a problem for a restaurant, which ultimately translates into a poor customer experience. So therefore, it is very important to have, as I said earlier, a really good business process that allows you to respond to these kinds of changes, and then also accompany that with the technology that will allow you to very quickly see what is going on and make the necessary changes and react. What were the considerations that you had when you were selecting a technology partner? Like, what Absolutely. were you looking for to make sure that you had the right partner to help you on the journey? The incredible devotion that we have to our customer service. So our partner had to have that same vision first. Second, it had to be a partner that understood our industry and our business model. As we were evaluating partners, we started looking at all these different dimensions to try to identify who were the folks that could, only, could not only accompany us on this journey, but be able to grow with us and make sure that ultimately we could become a 6,000, 12,000 or 18,000 restaurant chain in the future. So you're on um, mostly spreadsheets and other kind of cobbled together systems in the past. Um, and then you've been able to sort of implement the Oracle Cloud platform. Mm -hmm. What were some of the, the specific um, products that you started with? Like what did your, what did your journey for implementation look like? Um, where did you start and why? With the suite of products of Oracle, you have so many things that it's sometimes a daunting task to understand where to start. So we decided to go with the planning solution first. So we wanted to make sure that we could demand plan and supply plan the things that were moving around their network. When goods flow, right, there's also, of course, financial resources that flow as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to couple that planning engine with the financial en engine and make sure that those things work very closely together because ultimately, in the real world, they're intimately intertwined. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that those two modules were working together so that they could ultimately be the foundation to build things like master data and product development and things of that nature that will allow us to grow our platform even further in the future. What impact did that have? Like after you implemented um, those systems, the financial and supply chain systems, um, what were the results that you saw? Having the ability to see what's happening also gives us the ability to plan for the medium and the long term. 
So one of the key things that we saw is we were able to share information with many entities around the supply chain and be able to plan better for our growth for the future. So things, for example, like capacity planning, knowing when you're going to need your next factory, when you're going to need your next distribution center and where should you place it in, the, in your network became incredibly important for us. And so it, that is very difficult to do by hand and with precarious uh, engines and tools. So therefore, when you have that kind of technology, now all of a sudden your world opens up. Now, by coupling it with the financial planning module, we're also very clearly able to see the costs of everything that we're proposing. So that allows our executive leadership team to make the right decisions that are ultimately going to help the company grow in a more productive and efficient way. From a success metrics point of view, are there any numbers that your team is particularly proud of? Absolutely. So there are several metrics that we have, as any supply chain would have. But one of the ones that we're most proud of is service. So there are many ways to measure service. So we tend to measure what we call complete and time and accurate. And so this basically guarantees that we are sending the, the necessary food and equipment to the restaurants at the right time and with the right cost. So we've been incredibly proud of being able to improve that service metric and improve our costs at the same time, which normally tend to be metrics that people think are opposite, right? So, you, so people will normally tell you, well, yes, you can provide better service, but it's going to cost you more. That's actually not correct. When you have the right information infrastructure, you can have much better service at a more reasonable cost. So we are particularly proud of being able to do that with the technology that we've implemented. If you had the ability to give either yourself advice at the beginning of this project, um, or thinking about your peers who know this is a really vital journey to go on, maybe a little afraid, uh -huh. um, what is your advice? Like, what would you recommend? So this is really a great question because this is also like asking, hey, how am I successful? Like, what are the things that are ultimately going to, to make me successful or are they going to make me fail? So I'll give you a few things. So first of all, start really simple. One of the very tempting things about these technologies is to add a lot initially. And so you start looking at everything that the tool can do and you say, oh, we can solve that problem and that problem and that problem and that problem and that problem, right? Oh my God, yeah, implement it all. And so it becomes a very daunting task for the teams to implement enormous solutions. So what I tell people is building blocks, small building blocks, almost not enough to give you the solutions that you need, right? But very, very small, like baby steps. And so I think the reason why that's difficult to hear is because sometimes the teams that are implementing, they want to deliver an amazing solution for the business, right? And they want to do it right away. What I tell people is don't do that. Deliver a very small solution, a very standard solution, and make sure that it's very stable. And so once you have that piece stable, then build on top of it and make sure that you're adding on, right? Now, what happens is that makes implementations a little bit longer, a little bit more complex, but they allow you to build things in the right way. And they also allow you to backtrack. If you, for example, make a mistake, you can always backtrack, fix whatever you did, and then move forward. So that, I think, is one of the key pieces of advice. The second one would be make sure that you have the best people on the team from all perspectives. Internally, you have to pull the people that are absolutely fundamental to making sure that the business run, those are the people that you want in your implementations. And then your partner has to be phenomenal as well. One of the things that we do is we will actually interview the partners. We will interview the participants and we will choose who we want on the team. And not everybody makes it because you really want that. You want the best people and you want to make sure that you're investing the right amount of resource. Now, last but certainly not least is the executive engagement. You, make sure, you need to make sure that you have very, very strong executive sponsors and that they accompany you every step of the way. So things like steering committee meetings, which are not always the most fun things to do, mm -hmm. are incredibly necessary in these processes. So I would say those are the, the three key things. What are you passionate about? So I'm very passionate about making a difference for the food system in the world. I'm incredibly passionate about that. I think this is one of those things that will ultimately allow our population, our society, our kids to grow up to be healthier and incredible individuals. And so I think today our food system has a lot of uh, pitfalls and a lot of issues that I think we need to ultimately address. So one of the things that I'm particularly proud of is through the amazing things that we do at Chipotle, we're able to set an example for people out there 
to go and do the right things, to raise food the right way, to treat ingredients and to treat people, to treat farmers with the respect that they deserve and ultimately cultivate a better world. Well, thank you. This was great. Thank you for having me. With a commitment to local organic produce and high animal welfare standards, a burrito clearly can change the world. But as we've heard, it takes a village and the right systems and processes like a tight supply chain to ensure that village operates effectively. Now it's time to hear from Chipotle's chief technology officer, Kurt Garner, about the art of balancing technology and a people first culture. How do you feel like technology and people complement each other? I think there's a lot of discussion about fear around technology and the negative side of it, but how do you see technology and sort of this people centricity that you have really coming together in a good way? Where does technology make people thrive uh, as opposed to automate or replace those things that make us human? The best technologies, um, in my opinion, are those that enhance human experiences and amplify the things that are great about humanity. In these types of transformations, it's really important to have trusted partnerships. Um, how did you decide that Oracle was the right partner for you? Oracle is going to be at the top of everyone's list in terms of the technology. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to this position where um, it's a bit of the what, what is the solution, and then who. Uh, and with Oracle, we found tremendous uh, alignment kind of from the beginning in terms of our mission to cultivate a better world. And the, the teams and the solutions that were presented to us very quickly fell into lockstep with us. And frankly, I think taught us some things mm -hmm. along the way where I saw our teams fall lockstep with Oracle. I'd give you an example. At the beginning of this project, our finance and accounting organization was, I think, concerned about the amount of change that they would be exposed to, not just in terms of the project, but then what it would mean to be on a cloud platform that was changing all the time. After spending five or six months with the Oracle team, that hesitancy turned into excitement and then eagerness for more. Mm. Uh, it, it's easy to kind of categorize a team by its organization. Um, what I saw were the individuals on that team excited mm. about the contribution that they could make between Chipotle and PwC and Oracle. Uh, the teams just pulled together rapidly. I'm enormously proud that we made this transformation without issue and implemented significant new capabilities and functions in the company in less than nine months. Uh, and you know, it's a Fortune 500 uh, large and growing company uh, with all of the complexity of a just-in-time fresh supply chain. We bought 37 million pounds of local produce during the time we were implementing an Oracle Cloud supply chain and did not miss a beat within our restaurants. If you were talking to yourself at the beginning of this project, or you know, obviously this, the audience of this is to your peers. Right. Um, what do you think they need to know? Or what, do you, what you know, insights or knowledge do you think it's really important to share them about sort of you know, what you've learned and then also just considerations um, during the process? I think technology leaders today more than any other period uh, need to live in the future. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of peers that are still trapped in the past uh, with fear of change, with fear of how to manage things or trust others to ma manage things that are now out of their direct control. Um, if you're in a position where you're looking at a technology platform or a solution set and you know it's going to be different three years later, figure out where it's going to be and get yourself on the path now, um, or else you're going to just find yourself six years behind. Are there certain like metrics that you guys track as the success that you're very proud of? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that I'm most proud of in terms of the overall digital transformation is how our customers have engaged the new access points at Chipotle. Um, 
we have seen a 400% increase in our business there. Um, and we're still seeing a really strong in restaurant business. So for us, it's not become digital or in restaurant, it's digital and in restaurant. And people can now make choices about how they want a Chipotle that they couldn't make in the past. And that choice is, is proving to be something that's been profoundly impactful to the company and to our success. Uh, I'm also extraordinarily proud of how our people have grown through this process as well. Um, we're able to support this rapidly growing and changing business in a highly competitive industry with people leveling up in their jobs. We, we haven't had to go hire enormous groups of people and then run the risk of potentially getting it wrong on the culture fit uh, because we just need to plug more bodies in to process transactions. Um, the, the move that we've made in digital has, has really unlocked the potential of people and empowered them. So when you've got a customer group that's excited and more engaged, and you've got a employee group that's excited and engaged. Uh, I think it, it bodes well for the future of the company. And again, our mission is to cultivate a better world, to change food culture, to provide a market for farmers that are doing the right things in terms of farming and provide access to nour nourishing food that's free of additives and preservatives to more and more people. So it's been kind of a crazy year for a lot of us, and it's been um, an interesting year for the restaurant industry. Sure. What have you seen in the restaurant industry in the last year? How have things changed? Well, I think people are still looking for delicious food. I think uh, the community aspect of food, uh, if anything, has become stronger. In the first year of the pandemic, we saw behaviors where people were looking more for isolated uh, opportunities to eat, and maybe that's alone or with their family. Uh, food delivery certainly became a big thing in our industry. Uh, but we're social people and so social creatures, and I see people looking for those moments of connection more and more. Uh, I don't want to say go back to old routines because I think there's things that have probably changed permanently mm -hmm. in the world, uh, but more going back towards those uh, moments where you can celebrate one another. Uh, certainly food holds a place in society around celebration. Uh, in some ways, we can be the bright spot in somebody's day or that moment where they reconnect with a friend, a relative, or a colleague. Uh, so that, that's been special, I think, in the restaurant industry. Um, I'm really proud of the people that work in our restaurants and have shown up every day throughout the pandemic as essential workers kind of keeping everything stitched together. Uh, and I think we've learned a lot about ourselves and the communities that we serve that we'll take forward with us for whatever the future holds. Thank you, Kurt, for this knowledge and insight and for your leadership in continuing to improve food culture. And a big thanks to all of you for tuning in. I know you're probably itching to order your favorite Chipotle burrito right now, but before you do, if you're ready to take your business to the next level, Oracle can help you build a more agile and predictive finance and supply chain strategy that fuels your mission and drives continued growth. To learn more and ask questions, visit us at the Customer Spotlight page and we'll make sure to get you connected to the right team. And of course, be on the lookout for another insightful episode of Customer Spotlight. You never know who will be shining a light on next.